No! I made a hole in it. I lost power. I was just finishing with flashlight. Well, I'm confused. There's strawberry milk dripping out of the bottom. But hey, who doesn't love a pocket friend? I'm celebrating my 22nd birthday the night before I turn 23. Procrastination. I know. So I need to make the co-star of the outfit and the party strawberry cow print pants. However, I will be disappointing any strawberry fans as there are no strawberries in this video. Now I say co-star because I have this fabulous hat that I will be wearing with it. So I'm not a farmer or an agriculture major or anything of that sort that would know a good cow when they see it. I am simply a cow print pant enthusiast. That being said, when I was looking up reference photos and I searched the term spotted cow, all I got was a logo and I wanted real pictures so that wasn't going to help. So the terms that I found that showed me cows with spots include, and bear with me on pronunciation, Mont Belliard cow, which is French, and when it comes to French I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce it the French way while speaking English or if you're supposed to butcher it into English and say something like Montbelliard cow. Then we have piebald cow and finally Holstein Frisian or as I would have pronounced it Holstein Frisian. But considering how I pronounced Percy Jackson as Piercy Jackson throughout the entire series and Persephone as Persephone, I don't we can trust my pronunciation judgment. Using paint, I put a bunch of spotted cow reference photos in one spot, but it does lower the quality, so you might want to keep them bookmarked or in your open in your browser still. Then using said reference photos, I figured out what types of spots I wanted and where to put them. I wanted to do a bigger, more realistic print versus the ones that I've seen trending, which have been a small cartoonish splotch kind of thing, which is cute, it's just not what I wanted. So I took a reference photo of the white pants and then I used paint to do a sketch of where I want the spots and I moved them around and changed the different types of spots, played with and figured out what I wanted the pattern to be. What I have to do next is freehand in pencil the pattern onto the pants so I can paint them. So I found white wide leg high waisted raw hem pants on Poshmark but they were a size too big, so then I went to thread up to see if they had them, but they didn't have them from the same brand. I was gonna go to the website for Old Navy, but they didn't have any, and I'm surprised because I figured with, you know, the cow prints trending that that type of pant would have been in stock because I figured people would have been doing it themselves. So then I went back to Poshmark and found one in a size that fits me better. And if you've ever worn or seen the memes about women's jeans, you know that it's just a bunch of made-up sizing because I can't be bothered to use actual measurements. And I'd previously worn Old Navy jeans, so I kind of understood the sizing a little. I feel like this is unironically giving Alex Russo from Wizards of Waverly Place in that one episode, Wizards vs. Asteroids, where they have to stop an asteroid from hitting the Earth and, you know, wiping out humanity. In that episode, they wore these cow print spacesuits. Honestly, they're adorable. High waisted. The pocket lining is nude, which is really cool because I feel like on white pants the pocket lining shows up and just looks awkward. Wide leg. It's got two pleat lines here, then a raw hem edge. It looks like there's both frayed short pieces and then these long dangly tassel bits at the bottom there. Materials. So as for the materials that I used for this project, we have my mom's sewing pattern paper cardboard to put in between the pant legs to prevent the paint from leaking through and ruining the other side. A water container, a container to mix paint in, a box cutter to cut the cardboard to size, multiple sizes of paint brushes, some of those paint mixy knife things, multiple pencils, a pencil sharpener, a crayon if you want to color in the draft so you can see it better and see what parts to leave white. Textile medium, I used acrylic paint, pins if you're going to pin the pattern onto the pants. Also yes, that one is glossy acrylic, which 
probably wasn't what I wanted, but it turned out fine, so it doesn't really matter. I used more of the fluorescent pink than I did the red and the bright pink. Or the pink blast, what does it say? Pink blast. Oh, ho. Also, if you're using a little flimsy cup like I did for the water, I would recommend putting it in something like a heavier mug so that we don't knock it over and spill water all over the place because that would be bad. Also, yes, that is a half of a crayon in the color Wild Strawberry. I cannot find the other half of the crayon. I put it somewhere safe because Max was playing with it and he broke it in half and now I can't find the other half to show you. So you're gonna have to just accept half a crayon. Best offer. If you don't have big pattern paper like I did, you could just tape smaller papers together or any other sort of paper. It doesn't have to be pattern paper. Oh, and duh, you need whatever you're gonna paint on too. For me, it was my pants. More materials I forgot to mention. You're gonna need an iron to heat set it and fabric to put over top and in between in case it tries to bleed. So we started drawing on the pants immediately because I was frustrated about procrastinating and I don't like how brain-esque it came out looking. Normally my drawing process is a very rough first draft freehanded using references. I often have to rewarm up my drawing ability if I haven't drawn in a while. Then I cleaned up and adjusted the second draft and a third and final draft. Depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I will trace the third draft onto another paper, so if I make mistakes when coloring, I can easily fix it. In this project, I did more drafts because I wasn't satisfied, and I kept adjusting. Here are some of the reference photos. Here's another one. I did not end up using all of the reference photos that I had initially found that I really liked. As you can see, there are 17 different ones and I did not end up using all of them. Between the first draft that I did on the actual pants before I moved to paper and the paper copies, I pulled out my sketchbook and the top ones you can see those are direct traces of the reference photos. And then the bottom ones here are freehanded based off of the reference photos. Because I was trying to get a better understanding of the cow print. Because I was having a hard time having it come out organically looking. Then I used the sewing pattern paper to draft large size sketches. I colored the good drafts with crayon to understand the shape better when looking at it. This is a reference photo for what would be the, if you're looking at the pants, the right leg. I know this is hard to see. You're gonna have to lean your head down and move it around to the right angle and see it better. Come on, this is a two-way street. You're gonna have to put some effort into it. Oh, made a hole in it. Oh. This is technically the first draft. This is what was on the pants based on the reference photo. I traced it on the paper and, you know, crowned it. 
to see the shape better. I really like the bottom, but I didn't like the top. This is the technically what would be the first paper draft, but the second attempt at this, I made the the shape in the middle wider and bigger in a sense. I put a different bottom on it. I liked the bottom, but I also didn't like the bottom. One is harder to see because the pencil's not drawn as well. This is the third draft, and I took the bottom from the first attempt and put it on the top. You saw in the second one there was no top. And I kept the bottom from the second draft for the third one. But I didn't like that it didn't have that rounded shape like my initial sketch. Second draft versus third draft. Three and four are very similar. As you can see, I raised the top for four. I also didn't color four in for some reason. And I tried to make the bottom a little rounder on four compared to three. Three goes a little down a little bit more. Now this might be hard to see because I didn't color in four, but the difference between four and five, basically what I did, I took the bottom from four and put it at the top from five because I really liked the bottom, but I didn't like that it wasn't rounded at the bottom. And then I took the original bottom from the first draft and put it as the bottom for the fifth draft. And you can see there's also other parts, that little island to the far left that was on the bottom is now part of the top. Fifth and final draft next to first draft. This is the first and only draft for the top right, same with the circle side. Uh, I might flip it and move it closer to the edge so it fits better with the pattern below it. This is basically where the pocket is. It's right above the other design. The reference photo. This is the first draft for the left side of the pants. It is based on this sketch, but I ended up not liking it, so I redid it. This is the second draft for the left pocket front area. Okay, I don't, I don't know why my note says one. And this is the reference photo that I used for that, just a little section of that middle cow splotch. For the back of the right leg, when you're looking at it, it's basically the same reference photo, just the other half of what's going on. This half for the front, this half for the back. So it wraps around the leg. The first sketch is kind of a few attempts in one, trying to move parts around. It's really just small detail changes. As you can see in the second draft, much more of the detail is figured out. We kind of planned out the entire thing, how the whole design looks. Same, we took the pieces from the first one, we just kind of further elaborated on it. The third and final draft, we added a top. I say we, like the me and the mouse in my pocket. I removed some of the detail that you saw in two because it felt too busy. Some of the spacing didn't line up between the front and the back, so we adjusted some of the spacing between the second and third draft. Here's two and three next to each other, so you can see we mo I moved it down a little bit. You can also see some of the detail I took out. It's basically the same with a few minor changes. This is the first draft of the back pocket on the circle side. I decided I was going to do a little cow on it, which obviously isn't necessarily super realistic to a cow print, but I thought it'd be cute and silly. This is the second and final draft for the cow pocket on the circle side. By this point, I kind of better understood how to draw a good looking cow print or one that I liked. And the first shot, you kind of get used to drawing it. There's a little, little cow 
in the center. This is the first draft uh, for the back other pocket with like the triangular side. It gets confusing. I you flip it over, the left is right and right is left. I, I, this is the reference photo for that draft, but I changed it. This is the new and improved pocket design, and this is the reference photo right here for the new design. This is back draft one for the side with like the triangle, the front. This is the top, this is the bottom. This is back draft 1.5. On the back side of the paper, a completely different attempt from the first draft. This is back draft two. You can see it's totally changed shape. This side over here is very similar, if not the same to the front side. It's just, I've changed the bottom and tried to make it different and I've also this is the first line which is basically I traced over the front I moved it inward a little so it doesn't take up as much space this is the third and final draft for the back you can see I've separated this blotch here from over here I've added in a little spot over here and this is using the same reference photo as the front. The front does not have a paper sketch. The front is only sketched onto the pants because I really liked how it did it the first time. And here is the reference photo. This part here is flipped upside down. Here's all the final drafts together. These are all the top parts of the pants. Here is the left side on the back. Sorry, the tripod's in the way, my bad. Here is the front um and back of the right side again sorry the tripod's in the way i'm trying to have the camera be steady so you can see what i'm showing you there's a big circle ish thing in the side which will be white again no front left because i already liked the design then i transfer the design onto the pants so since i didn't like the design i washed the one pant leg and threw it in the dryer and I don't know if you can see because A, there's a cat on there, B, it's kind of hard to see because it's just washed away pencil. But now it's almost completely gone off of the pant leg. So now I can redraw the new design. See on this pant leg, the pencil's still there. To transfer the pattern onto the pants, I pinned the pattern to the pants and awkwardly kept flipping it over, checking as I tried to redraw it onto the fabric. Then I remembered something that would make it so much easier. Do you remember in elementary school when you drew something with either colored pencil or crayon and then you put a paper on top and wrote and it transferred onto the back of the paper on top? Yes, yeah, so I did that. I flipped the pattern paper and lightly drew over where the lines were with the pencil. Then I could just put the pattern on top of the fabric and trace slash transfer it on directly. Oh, see, here's the spot that I missed. This is by right here that I really thought was really cute, but I totally missed it in the actual painting. I guess I painted right over it. I believe if I look on the back, I don't think it's there. Yeah, it's not there. Trace over all the backs of these to transfer it easier. Would you work on most of them except a cut? So this is sewing pattern paper that I used. The one side seems to be shiny and the other side is not. The ones that I did that had the shiny side on the back I didn't really pay attention to when I was originally doing it. The graphite didn't really catch on it very well compared to the one that wasn't the shiny side. So it didn't transfer as well. So I kind of had to try and do that, but I ended up having to just trace over or draw over the lines and fill in the missing spaces. And then I told you before that I thought about flipping and moving the heart looking spot to the side. So I ended up doing that. I ended up using this side. I flipped it over, traced it on the back, but I guess there was still enough pencil lead from when I first drew it. I didn't really have to go over it as heavily as some of the other pieces. But yeah, I flipped it over and I moved it to the side. And it looked much more fitting than being close to the middle.
Next comes painting. I played around with mixing the fluorescent pink paint with various shades of red and pink in an attempt to warm and soften it. I didn't feel much of me drawing and painting because I spent almost two weeks, about six to eight hours a day working on it, and trying to film just slows the process down. I lost power. I was just finishing uh, the backside with flashlight. I wanted to show you real quick the difference between the first coat on the left here and the second coat on the right here. You can see the color is much more is vibrant and equally covered. On this side there you go progress update this is the finished front painting the details on the front pocket. The one spot almost looks like a little calcifer, but that's purely accidental. Here's the front detailing. You can see that one spot there where I messed up and I started painting in the part that was supposed to be white, so I tried to undo it, but you can still kind of see the pink. When you're looking at it from afar, it's not as pink looking. Okay, well, it's pink, but it's not that bad. More cat fur and pencil marks. Based on the music that I listened to when I recorded the other video, now I have fast times just on repeat in my head most days. It's kind of hilarious, but also good that I still haven't become so tired of the song. I tried to use a lint roller to get some of this fur off, but it did not really work that well. It kind of just, all the, all the fur just like is in a straight line, like straight lines downward. Oh, with the way that I brushed it with the lint roller. Hey, this is practically a land map. There's a little inlet and everything. Probably got docks and boats stocked and everything. If this were a map, what would the country be called? Oh. Here's the detail in the other front pocket. I tried to vary all the patterns so that there were some bigger spots, some little spots, some more detail, some less detail. Basically to give variation, make it interesting all around so you've got lots to look at when you see them. Also yes, there is cat fur that is permanently put into this project because it's in the paint. And that was just unavoidable. There was just cat fur everywhere. It really doesn't matter that much. It's not that visible unless you get up close. I was thinking about either painting some of the little dangly tassely bits pink or taking some either embroidery thread or sewing thread, depending on which seemed the better size, and adding pink that way, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that or not. Here is the finished painting in the back. Next, the pants. Hey, 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 don't claw it. These are the finished pockets. Here's a closer look at the details in the pocket. As you can see, it kind of looks like there's strawberry milk dripping out of the bottom. It would make for a very uncomfortable pocket experience. But hey, who doesn't love a pocket friend? I actually made her belly a slightly different color in that one spot. 
by her arm, mixing it with a little bit more water, which I thought was kind of a cute, a fun little detail to make the belly a light pink. I broke the chunks up and added little chunks in between, little spots. Chunks? What is this? Chunky milk? A weird drippy effect almost. I don't know that that was the intention to make it look drippy outside of the pocket. Lots of different variation in the spots and the shapes and sizes and designs. So I noticed I did miss one spot on this. It was a little cross or a multiplication sign or something on this and I painted over where it was supposed to go. I don't know if I want to touch that up and add some white or if I'm just going to say screw it. I might come back to this later and readjust it. I don't know. Here is the other back pocket detailing. I'm going to be honest, the line work is not the cleanest, but it's okay. We're not touching it up. You can even see the pants pattern. And yes, there's still pencil on it because I didn't wash it yet because I've still got to iron it. I'm gonna be honest, yes, there is a lot of cat fur on these pants. That is unfortunately the nature of having a cat. The cat fur just goes everywhere. You can see a couple spots there where it almost mimics the pattern of fur, as if the fur was brushed or something. More little spots where I kind of added a tiny bit of detail to make it more interesting and almost more, I don't want to say realistic, but as if there's fur. And you can still see some of the pencil markings where I changed the pattern and traced it. Nice. Move. Beep beep. Beep beep. Slice like butter. You could even say it's smooth like butter. <laughs> Perhaps even a criminal undercover. Oh, perfect. Now we have some fabric to put in the pants to prevent it from paint going through when I iron it. Perfect. So I was just about ready to start ironing this. I came to the uh, conclusion that, hey, wait a minute. There isn't a regular outlet on this side of the room. There is a dimmer switch outlet, which I cannot plug it into. I had to get my parents to find a heavy duty extension cord, which let me just show you how much there is and how heavy it is. Holy hell, this is heavy as shit, isn't it? And heck, this is heavy as heck. And there's a lot of it and it's really gonna be a problem to deal with this. Every time I try and do anything, there's a million problems. Okay, I guess I'll see you once I've dealt with that. <laughs> One of the websites I looked at for instructions said to do it for basically like five minutes, so let me restart that since I'm talking. Uh, I guess we're going to give it a whirl and see. So, put that back here so it's out of the way. Put the fabric on top. Put fabric in between right here. Oh man, this fabric's awful wrinkly. It looks like it could use an iron. <laughs> I guess we'll start. Five minute timer. I don't feel very hot, so I don't know. Yeah, it's just cold. Well, I'm confused. It doesn't feel hot at all. It doesn't feel like it's doing anything. I'm all confused. Put it on the center. Put it on cotton. Well, I'm confused. I'm very confused. Okay. I'm gonna go ask my mom for help because I don't know how to do this. Okay, hi, hello, I'm back. So apparently it's just that, so I got a heavy duty extension cord that's capable of handling the input or output or whatever, whatever you call it, of the iron. The middle plug, there's three plugs in it, just didn't work. I plugged it into the side one, works perfectly fine. Now the iron's getting hot really quick. Let me restart my timer. And start again. My five minute time. Okay. Try this again. I don't wanna I don't wanna keep it on too long because I don't want it to scald the paint or something as they say. Okay, there are like a couple of stains on this fabric. I don't I don't know what it is, but it's fine because it has been washed. So no worries. Just do this. 
The instructions on the actual the textile medium said it only needs to do it for like 20 seconds. But I looked up some more instructions, more detailed. Let's see, oh, am I supposed to use water or steam? No, okay, that's fine. And then they said that they did it for like three to five minutes. So I don't really know. I don't want to overdo it and ruin the paint. Because this right here is make or break. This is the part where we could like actually just ruin the pants and it would be very upsetting and very disastrous. They say to keep moving the iron. Which, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But they said to not let it like cool down too much to, so to do like a smaller space. I'm gonna make sure that I'm getting this whole big spot. We're doing the circular side first. So we'll see how that works. It looks like it's fine so far. I don't want to overdo it, but I don't... I don't know if you can overdo it. Okay, I'm going to see that's five minutes. We're going to turn that off. Dismiss the timer. I guess I'll unplug it for right now because i got to readjust the pants. I'll let that cool. And, okay, let's look at the pants. Look at the pants. It looks fine. Still very hot, so we'll let that cool before. This should be fine. Should now be heat set on this side. That's nice and warm. That's like fresh out of the dryer warm. Such a vibrant color. And now I can take the fabric out. I don't think any, doesn't look like it blood through. But we put that fabric in there just for safekeeping. my bad touch I didn't start my timer oops I don't know how long it's been but the other one for like five minutes basically it's probably been five minutes since. okay we'll quit on that take this off looks good very spicy and warm <coughs> don't eat the cord please don't eat the cord <laughs> don't bring the iron down on yourself that would be bad Okay, this is the front side, the triangular looking part. Now I have heard that sometimes when you, once you wash it, that it might actually soften up. The part that I painted feels like paint. It's kind of like a little stiffer. Allegedly, the whole ironing and washing process will make the paint a little softer, but I don't know. This is my first time doing this kind of ironing paint. I've painted on fabric before, but I've never actually done the whole nine yards of textile medium ironing. I have to wait seven days before I can wash this. Okay, I'm gonna say we're done on that side. That looks good. Looks like the same. Okay, I'm gonna take the fabric out. Ooh, that's a bit spicy. I'm gonna put the fabric in at the top. So far, this is going well. Here it's our bar. Knock on wood. Might be wood. We'll, we'll knock on the wood as well. Just in case. Just for safety. I'm almost done on the front ironing. We are now onto the back side of the pants. Let's go. Okay, now onto the top. Last part. It seems as though I've made a fatal mistake. You see, I didn't make sure that all the paints weren't washable with soap and water. Now the fluorescent pink should be fine, but the red and the light pink that I mixed it with are washable. I don't know how it's going to hold up after washes. We're going to have to see. Now sometimes quote unquote washable paint doesn't actually wash out, so it might be fine. Anywho, I guess time will tell. Is this how Professor X felt when he was making the Powerpuff Girls? Oh god, that's splashing. Oh no. Well, here goes. I hope I don't ruin the pants. It's definitely been over seven days, so it should turn out fine. We're just gonna hand wash these. This is easier than throwing it in the washing machine.
It better be fine. The water doesn't look like it's turning pink, so we should be good. Hopefully this is some of the cat from my favorite, but no guarantee. I guess I'll rinse them now. Now, I never read it, but my parents talked about this book, See Jack Run. The red box jumped over the fence. Now, since there's water on the floor, see cat slip. Wow! Rinse. I wonder if this is going to wash out any of the pencil that's like on the outside yet. Stuff that's underneath the paint, obviously probably not. But the stuff that's around it, maybe? Maybe not? Doesn't really matter. It will fine regardless. Oh, let me see your baby! Eh, just pants. I know half of my lights are in the shot right now. But I just wanted to show you that da da da! These are the final pants. Finished, they've dried after washing. This is what they look like. Fabulous. As for how the pants held up after washing with my mistake, there are a few spots that the paint lifted a little, but it's really not that bad. And I'm gonna leave it as is for now, but I can always touch it up later. But here they are. Honestly, I'm very satisfied with how they turned out. I love the final result of the design. Though I do wish I could have made the paint a bit warmer because it is still that fluorescent pink that just didn't match with the hat, but honestly, it works. It's fine. I'll just have to not use fluorescent paint next time. Mm -hmm. And yes, it does still have that paint texture, but what are you gonna do? It's paint. I'm gonna say it, it's not super painty, but it's paint. <sighs> and there's no changing that. Beep, 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 beep. Stop being mad. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh no. This is exactly what it was like doing it. Having the cat just kept eating my pencils, swatting me for my pencils. Literally anything to be part of the project. <laughs> <laughs>